we all have to be prepared for the possibility of an emergency incident on a work site. For this reason, it is the legislated responsibility of your employer to have an emergency response plan in place. This plan must be developed with the workers that may be affected, and it must be kept current and periodically reviewed by everyone involved. The plan must include the identification of potential emergencies and how to deal with them, emergency response facility locations and training requirements, fire protection requirements, alarm and first aid requirements, the procedures necessary emergency PPE and designated workers for rescue and evacuation, locations of emergency evacuation assembly areas or muster points, and there must be regularly simulated emergency exercises and training so that everyone knows and practices the correct response. In an emergency, the designated emergency person who is first on scene must assess the situation and alert others to sound alarms and draw the attention of others to evacuate. Activate emergency services by dialing 911 or the designated emergency phone number for your work site. Check with your supervisor. It may not be 911. Call the fire department if fire, resuscitation, or rescue services are required. Call utility companies when needed. Management will call government departments, family members, and possibly the media. Provide information as to the type and location of emergency and what assistance is required. Arrange to have one employee meet emergency vehicles at the gate or property entrance to direct emergency responders. Extinguish fire, if applicable. Shut off main gas supply, if necessary. Shut off main electrical breaker, if necessary. Close all fire doors, if possible. Evacuate buildings and site, if deemed appropriate, opening all doors to vent gases. Designated fire wardens and monitors are to make certain everyone has evacuated. In the event of a site emergency, when you hear an alarm or siren, shut down all work activities and equipment if safe to do so, and proceed to the appropriate assembly area or muster point on foot. Do not drive to the assembly area. In the case of a flammable gas or combustible vapor leak, your vehicle may be a source of ignition. If the evacuation occurs when you are driving, safely pull off to the side and park. Turn off the ignition, and depending on the work site, you may have to leave the keys in your unlocked vehicle. Evacuation assembly areas are established and marked. Some work sites may have a visible windsock. Otherwise, check wind direction with visual aids such as flags and smoke from stacks. And workers should proceed upwind or crosswind from the source of an emergency to the safest muster point. If working in a fully operational industrial plant or facility, make certain you are aware of the location of emergency exit gates that are usually installed at regular intervals within the perimeter fencing of these facilities. These gates are intended to facilitate evacuation off the property when safe access to an assembly area is not possible. And remember, when you hear an evacuation alarm or siren, you don't know the nature of the emergency hazard. It may be a flammable or combustible leak. Consequently, there must be no smoking in the assembly or muster areas, as matches, lighters, and cigarettes may become a source of ignition. A head count will be taken within the designated assembly areas to ensure all personnel are safe and accounted for. For this reason, it is extremely important that you sign in when arriving for work and that you sign out if leaving. If you haven't signed out when you leave, emergency responders may be placing their lives at risk in a needless search for your whereabouts. Personnel must remain in the designated assembly areas or muster points until the headcount is completed. You must wait for notification from a company representative that it is safe for you to return to your work area. Always check the emergency response plan and site map or diagram for wind direction indicators, first aid stations, alarms, assembly areas, and emergency exits. On a busy work site, emergency locations often change to accommodate construction progress. It is your job to stay informed. 
If you don't know or have any questions about first aid or muster point locations, don't hesitate to ask your supervisor. Workers must review the emergency response plan and emergency procedures prior to commencing work and regularly at tailgate safety meetings. Make certain you know the alarms and sirens and specifically what they mean to your job site. Your supervisor will identify the alarms for you. Suitable emergency vehicles may be required to be present for certain isolated or high-risk work sites. In the case of a fire drill or a false alarm, once the alarm has been cancelled, wait for an announcement from a company representative that it is all clear to return to work. An informed, diligent and safe workforce with a concern for each other and with training for emergency evacuation is critical to the health and safety of every worker on a construction project or work site. Thank you for staying alert, aware and proactive. And thank you for watching.